IVC, this is Bev here, clinical vision, and um, this is just an update video I'm going to do for now. I thought I'd get this one out of the way. Um, I first of all, I've got my broadband sorted out. Um, that was uh, turned into a slight saga, but uh, the guy that came out a week ago to sort the problem, or look at the problem and have it sorted, uh, forgot to log it and hence nothing was done and when my mum phoned up they had no record of it so it took another week because they had sent someone out again and blah blah blah. However, <laughs> it was sorted this weekend um, and I've just kind of felt a bit kind of not really in the mood to do videos lately. I don't know why. I've, I've had other things going on um, and I think they've just kind of... Um, uh, life kind of gets in the way and um, sometimes that uh, you kind of just once you've dealt with daily life you kind of not really in the mood kind of thing um, and I guess that's just how I've been feeling but uh, I just thought right I'm going to get this done now and um, Metal Mickey just commented on uh, one of my comments actually which kind of prompted me to just go and do it anyway um, he said he was listening to um, the Scottish band uh, that were around in the 80s, Heavy Pattern, um, and uh, the album is called, is it Letting Loose I think it was? Um, he says, uh, recommends to check that one out, so, um, okay. So I've just got on with this update just now, um, I've got a cassette, two CDs and ten records that I've accumulated over the last kind of three or so weeks. Um, most of them are being really cheap grabs, um, hence the reason why there's about ten of them. Uh, there was two that were a wee bit dearer to get, um, but um, I didn't mind paying a little bit more, but one of them came in for Germany of course. So, uh, um, but anyway, we'll get on with it. And the first one I spotted this on eBay and I thought I have to grab this because I know um, it's, it's not the easiest one to find on the CD and it's certainly not the easiest to get on record. You'll probably need a bank loan to get the record anyway because it's from 1993. Uh, but it's Iron Maiden, uh, a real live one. I think this is the first of the two that were kind of issued uh, around the same time. Um, I used to have a, the t-shirt for this um, back in the day, in the early 90s. There was a shop in the Waverley Market, which is like a, a shopping mall in Edinburgh, um, and they had a, a, a record store called Coda Music, and in here was this Iron Maiden red t-shirt. I thought that looks so cool, and this was really before I was really into Iron Maiden properly, but I just loved the look of the t-shirt. Um, and they only had one left, which was extra large, I think, so, um, you know, and we're going back something like 25 years, I think. Um, you know, so the t-shirt was too big for me anyway, but I wasn't caring, I just had it. <laughs> had some pocket money at the time or in fact I can't even remember if I'd started working around that time or I probably had just been working so that'd be why I was able to, to get it. Um, I think I started working about 1993 so so yeah a real live one I've never this is one of the ones I've never actually heard the live stuff off of um, and it's EMI of course for Iron Maiden side two, side one, uh, and the inner thing, and um, there's a lot of stuff on the cassette, and obviously, you know, you'd get all this on the vinyl and in a CD booklet, but on the cassette, because there's so much stuff, so a lot of the print is quite um, small, um, but yeah, live photos and um, uh, a wee bit of uh, info from Steve Harris, I think it is, that writes that. Yeah, Steve Harris, Christmas 92, he wrote that little bit there. So I thought, oh yes, yeah, so I'll have this on cassette just now. That'll be very nicely. My first time made in cassette, actually. 
uh, and the two CDs. Picked this one up for two pound, um, and it's like as if it's in brand new condition. Um, and it's uh, Sonata Artica, and it's Pariah's Child uh, Nuclear Blast, and it's the uh, the Media Book style version. This is 2014 Nuclear Blast. Um, so I think this is one of the newer ones. Um, I've not listened to this yet, but again, it was in beautiful condition. The uh, disc slides in at the front here. There we are, which is in mint condition. And uh, of course, the booklet, these things have always got beautiful artwork. Um, in really nice condition. So I am. Um, curious to uh, sample a bit more of these guys so I think for Sonata Art I think this is the second one of theirs I've picked up um, the first one I think I was sent in VCLT uh, from Mr Finglish at Bad English Rex I think it's is it Silence that one which I quite liked and that comes with a, a limited edition patch um, as well, so it's in really nice condition. So that is uh, Pariah's Child, and um, this one again, how much did I pay for this one? About two pound music magpie, and I'm in a complete astonishment because not only is the CD in lovely condition and the booklet is in lovely condition, the jewel case as well is in lovely condition, which makes me wonder if they've rehoused it or if it's just a fluke that it just so happened that the previous owner really looked after their discs but this is absolutely spotlessly clean for a music magpie <laughs> and it's uh, Euthanasia by Megadeth. I recently noted somebody's comments talking about how this album was a bit more melodic sounding and that pricked up my ears and I thought oh aye that one could be of interest to me so um I'll pick it up and I, I listened to this today actually and I can tell you I quite liked some of it. Um, I found this um, to be um, pretty pleasant to listen to, <laughs> you know, for my taste. Um, I have another Megadeth CD on the way. I want it off eBay for 99 pence so that's coming uh, which means I'll be doing a, a Megadeth part 3. I'll be doing a a review type thing on this and the other one um, so yeah but I was I was really quite surprised at the this is a 1994 I think it's original press um, and it's in really nice condition there's not a mark on the CD the only thing is there's a little bit of flaking coming off where the sort of picture just in the center bit here um, I don't know what's happened there but it plays fine, it doesn't affect anything, um, and the booklet, you know, I won't get it out because already I'm into eight minutes here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, so I was chuffed to get that. Uh, it's another it's another one of these interesting covers, <laughs> actually, I find that one. So that's the two CDs in the uh, cassette, onto the records. Um, so it's a mixture of charity shop pickups and cheap eBay bargains, uh, apart from one which was a dearer eBay um, but this one I picked up at 99 pence in the charity shop and you know looks absolutely lovely the sleeve um, this is level 42 and it's a double A side and it's got it's leaving me now and I sleep on my heart has it sleep on my heart and um, it is a double A because it's got side A and side double A um, and it also has Dream Crazy. Now I'm not, I was never a huge Level 42 fan, but um, one of their songs, this one, Leaving Me Now, was, uh, I really loved that song back in the day when I heard it. Uh, I just thought it would be kind of cool to have it on record, so. So, and um, there is a, I've cleaned it up, I've given it a, a clean, um, the, it's in not too bad condition. There's some light scuffs on it here and there, but on side two, and I really don't know if this will show up or not um, in the light, but there is a, um, just, a, it's kind of right there. Um, it goes from here 
right to the outer edge. Um, there is a, it's like a surface scratch and you can feel it lightly. Um, however, it does not seem to affect the play, I'm pleased to say. So um, there it's there actually, you can just see it. Just there. Um, yeah, but, it, uh, and I wondered about that. I thought, well, it's only 99 pence, we'll see. If it's rubbish, it's not the greatest loss, but um, it does so happen to play <coughs> okay, so I'm happy enough for that. Um, and it's on Polydor. And this is uh, 1985, and the 42 were uh, quite big in the 80s in the UK charts. It's a lovely bit of piano playing in, in that song, leaving me now. This was one of the two ignore expensive ones, but I um, still regard this as a bit of a bargain uh, for this one. Um, Death Leopard bringing on the heartbreak. Um, 12 inch single, 1982 vertigo. Um, it's, the cover is mint, basically. As you can see the edges, there's not a, not a problem there at all. Um, and the record itself is in excellent condition as well, there's hardly a mark on it. I'm not going to take this one out, um, but uh, that is the label. Vertigo, bring it on the hard right On the other side you get, um, if I can remember, I'm going to have to, because I've not put the record in the actual inner sleeve of this one. So if you bear with me, there's a couple of marks on the back, because it's white, just here I think where it's been stored away. Um, so it's me and my wine and uh, you got me one, which happens to be on high and dry. Um, at this point me and my wine was uh, previously unreleased. So um, I have this already. But uh, it was a very decent price for the condition. I couldn't resist because it, it's one of my favourites uh, in my collection of Death Leopard stuff. So just thought, why not have a second copy? Uh, then on to the albums. <coughs> Thrilled to get this. This was one on my uh, list of wants. It's now off the list, thankfully. This is Skagarak. A uh, Danish band and it's Hungry for a Game. 1988 this one on Polydor Records and I think if I'm right this is a West German pressing. Uh, but yeah it's in beautiful condition. There is one slight blemish on the actual record but again doesn't affect play. Um, the inner sleeve is in nice condition as well. Uh, and the actual record itself. It is on the Polydor label, but it's kind of a, a silver coloured label there. Um, Skagarak. The, the glare there, sorry. Um, the, the one little blemish is right on the edge of the record and again I don't know how well it will show up but um, it's it almost looks as if that edge, that rough edge there, it's, it looks as if it's been kind of melted in the heat or something or it's just been badly finished when it's been cut. Um, so it's just right on the very edge, so all you need to do is just drop your stylus uh, just a little bit in from that because you've still got plenty of space on the run-in so it doesn't affect it. I was worried when I first saw that but thankfully it's not a problem. But honestly this is a great album, I absolutely love this. I don't know how I never heard the Skagrat back in the day, I'm thinking they should have been bigger than what they were, uh, but like Pretty Maids. But that was the problem with hard rock and metal, for some reason, especially in the UK, it was kind of almost frowned upon as um, bad music. I don't know why, some stereotypical nonsense. 
but um, hard rock and metal was never promoted hugely in the UK and it still isn't to this day. I mean, we've got so much rubbish in the charts just now when it could be filled with all this beautiful guitar music, you know. But it's not to be so, um, but yeah. I'm really chuffed to get that, so I'm now looking out for the one after this Slice of Heaven, I think it's called. Uh, this one was a charity shop find. <laughs> I could not believe it. It's still in the shrink, as you can see. I thought I'd leave it in the shrink just to let you see that. Um, it has been opened, obviously, but it's absolutely immaculate. There isn't a mark. It's uh, Victory, the band Victory now, I think. Are they German initially? Um, I have heard people mention them before, but I was never familiar with these guys either. And so, because it was so cheap and so wonderful uh, condition, I thought I'll have that. Um, so this is Culture Killed the Native by Victory, who are a German kind of melodic hard rock. Um, 1989 this one is, uh, mixed by Ronald Print. I think I've heard that guy's name. Now this has got Herman Frank in it. I've heard him. He obviously went on to another band, which the name escapes me at the moment. If you know who I'm on about, put it in the comments. So I will be removing this shrink. It's also a limited edition free artist poster. And yes, the poster is in it. Um, there it is, the, the poster. Again, it's in spotless condition. It's never been put on a wall. It's not got any marks on the corners. Um, it's quite large. There you have it. Don't know how well you can sort of see that, but there you go. And it's always a nice touch when you get that. Uh, the inner sleeve is immaculate lyrics. That will be uh, three of their earlier albums and the band members here and the uh, the record itself again spotless um, and it's on the metronome level. I've never heard a metronome before but uh, that's what it is. So and it is, um, it, it, this is an actual German pressing I think. Um, it says in Made in West Germany, but to, I think it's, is that the German word for side? City or city or, or, or is it, I don't know if it's even Spanish or something, I really don't know. But um, it's definitely not a UK press. <coughs> so, I was happy to grab a hold of that. I have listened to this and I quite enjoy it actually. Um, Pretty good. He's kind of the singer's voice. He kind of got one of these um, sort of higher pitched voices, kind of more. The kind of roughs it a bit like maybe Vince Neil or Tom Kiefer or. Oh God, what was. Uh, you know, bands like that, maybe that that kind of sound. Um, Fernando Garcia is the vocalist, so uh, yeah, victory, culture kill the native. Uh, this was the other expensive one, um, which came in from Germany, believe it or not, Scottish band. But um, I find this one was being quite tricky to, to find, um, but I have got it now. And this is Strange Ways, Walk in the Fire. Um, and I'm not sure if this is their third album, but it's 1989. Um, again, lovely condition. And this is on Bone Air Records. I think, I think this one's a UK press. Covers printed in Germany anyway, but the inner sleeve lyrics, and again, the record is um, in lovely condition. Um, 
So yeah, there's the label, Bone Air, the brightness there, um, and it says, what does it say? This is made in, well it's actually got German writing to be honest, so maybe it is a German press. It doesn't actually see, so it's highly likely that it is a German press, um, but it may be German press for Britain, I don't know. I haven't gone into the finer details of it yet. But yeah, strange means I get another kind of uh, melodic rock, kind of slightly AOR sounding maybe. Um, really good stuff. I had no idea that this brand existed back in the day. Um, there's no way I could have told you they were from Scotland. <laughs> um, so yeah, 1989. Lovely stuff. Uh, another charity shop grab. Um, again, this was going cheap and uh, I thought, okay. I didn't really know anything about this band, um, but I thought, well, yeah, they look kind of hard rock stuff or metal. Um, so I went for this. The cover has a little bit of age wear, but um, it's overall very good condition. Um, I think this is a US press because it's a stiff card cover and it's got printed in USA on the back. Uh, this is a female vocalist in this band as well, which I really wasn't aware of. Um, it's got a, a slightly flimsy or paper sleeve, but again, it's still in uh, really nice condition. Um, no splits, just a couple of creases. And it's on Arista. And it's just a self-titled. I don't know if this was just the, the one and only uh, release by this group. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Yeah, New York. So this is a US press. But, uh, great stuff. It's actually very good as well. It's very melodic. Um, quite enjoyable, catchy stuff. Um, a bit kind of similar. Robin Beck, perhaps, or uh, hint of Joan Jett about it, maybe, but something like that. I don't know, but yes, uh, Howard was commenting on Facebook when I put it up the other day, was it yesterday? Just asking if it was worth buying, and I would say yes. I think I did say that in my reply. <laughs> Can't get this back in the sleeve, bear with me. Um, definitely worth. Uh, getting a hold of this. Um, I'd imagine you'd probably quite enjoy this one because I do, which is good. So, yeah, Witness self titled, and what was the year again? Was it 1980? When is the year? I'm sure it was on here. It is 89, I think. Anyway. Uh, and let me just double check. The last four were eBay purchases, yeah, and um, they were all really quite cheap. Um, this one is by a band called Dead Ringer, and uh, this is their debut LP, Direct Line. Um, these guys I think they were uh, they they kind of came out in the new wave of British heavy metal kind of time scene. This album is 1981. They are a UK band and I think they hail from the Yorkshire area. Um, and they're on uh, a, a, a label, is it, what is it? Din Disc apparently. Um, so it didn't come with a, a picture in it or anything like that, it was just a Clean, but uh, this DIN disc label. The other side is a different colour, um, and they're kind of very traditional heavy metal kind of sounding. Um, I would say there's kind of elements of um, just hints of Thin Lizzy, a spot of status quo in there, um, even early Def Leppard I thought uh, were in here. Um, uh, 
the very kind of really nice sounding guitars, <coughs> good tone. Um, it was kind of it was a blind buy because um, the price was so good. I thought, yeah, I'll just grab a couple. I can't quite please that I did because um, there's quite some enjoyable stuff on here. Um, JG Hoyle vocals, Neil Hudson guitar, Al Scott guitar, Lee Flaxington on bass and vocals and piano, and Kenny Jones on the drums. Um, so yeah, dead drummer, direct line. And along with it was, uh, I think this was the follow-up album, um, yeah, Second Arising as it's titled up the top there. Um, I think this was this was it from this band, I think they kind of disbanded after that, I believe. Um, so this one's 1983 and it's on Neat Records, quite a colourful um, cover. Uh, this one does have a picture in it, that's them there. <laughs> so you can sort of see the kind of look, uh, yeah, early 80s hard rock metal. Um, fan club is addresses Harrogate, North Yorkshire. Um, lyrics, and this inner sleeve is a really stiff inner sleeve, it's a really nice one. Um, and here yeah, it's on the classic Neat Records uh, label. And they've got the, you can sort of see the thumb in the background there. There you go. And Dead Ringer. Um, again, this is in really nice condition. I've not yet heard this album. I heard the first one. Um, so I've still got this one to listen to. But yeah, they're pretty kind of good. Uh, traditional melodic early 80s hard rock. And got two more to go here. Do, 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 do. So, another one that I saw really cheap is Heavy Petting. And Letting Loose, another Scottish band. This is the one that Metal Mickey was listening to earlier this evening. Um, and he recommended uh, that I check it out. So here it is. Uh, I found a nice cheap copy and it's in really nice condition. There's a nice shine on it. Um, <coughs> I've no idea if this is the first album. I know they have a couple. Two or three, maybe. Um, again, another band I never really knew. I think I'd heard the name, but I never really took much notice of them back in the day. Um, this is from. Is there a date on here? Nineteen eighty-three. Um, and uh, that is kind of what they sort of look like. Uh, Polydor. It didn't come with an inner. This is on the kind of regular uh, red Polydor label. There we have it. Um, in really nice condition. So um, I've still to listen to this. So that will be getting spun shortly. But yeah, I uh, did have them noted down to to keep an eye out for. So um, yeah, finally got one. And the last one. Um, I finally pulled the trigger on this. This has been on eBay for a while and I decided just to go for it um, since I'm kind of getting into uh, Quartz lately as well. And this is Live Quartz. Um, this is a record from, I think it's 1980, the actual release, but it's a live gig uh, from Birmingham in 1979. Uh, so again, Quartz are uh, another band I, that I'm quite new to as I'm getting to know them, but I really like uh, their sound, they're very kind of new wave of British heavy metal sounding I think, uh, the traditional heavy metal and it's, it's on an independent label and um, it's on Reddington Rare Records label. Now Reddington Rare Records, I know for a fact they had a record store and 
either London or Birmingham, I think. Because um, I, I had heard of this Reddington Rare Records. They used to have adverts in Record Collector magazine back in the early 90s when I would pick up the odd uh, issue with that. And that's where I first learned about Reddington's Rare Records. So they obviously must have uh, funded the record deal or something for this band at the time. I don't know, but yeah. Um, so you've got four tracks on side one and three on side two. Um, but really made in England, really nice record. Um, I've listened to this, it's very good stuff. Uh, excellent. So I was very happy to get a hold of that as well. So that's my uh, latest pickups. I will have, uh, try and get some more videos up again soon. Um, obviously I've got that other Megadeth coming, so I'll be doing uh, another review video on that. Um, I think I'll be waiting on... There's one other record that I'm waiting on coming in as well. Uh, so, but yeah, so I'll uh, have some stuff up fairly soon. Um, but anyway, enough of my yakking because it's getting on for half an hour again. <laughs> um, so I'll see you all later and uh, bye for now.